Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session, Getting Your SEO Ready for the Holidays. My name is Kelly Rafalski. I am the Special Projects Coordinator here at NetElixir, and I'll be today's moderator. With me, I have our presenter and director of SEO, Sean Swaim. And I know he's really passionate about, uh, passionate about uh, today's topic, so let's get started right away. So I know you're all here for SEO, but I do want to touch on uh, some of the other services NetElixir provides to our great clients. So we do paid search as well as SEO and social media. We have our own technology called LXR, which is our own uh, unique proprietary technology uh, platform. Uh, we have thousands of businesses worldwide using this um, across 170 countries. We have LXR Marketplace and LXR SEO. And then we also consult on several topics as well. So here is today's agenda. Sean will walk us through uh, four different sections, including the bonus topic of replatforming readiness. And then we'll finish up with our Q&A session. And then sticking with the holiday spirit, we are offering two gifts to all of our attendees following today's presentation. So definitely stick around for that. Just a few housekeeping uh, tips. If you have any questions at all during today's webinar, please use the questions tool. As I mentioned, we'll set aside about 10 to 15, uh, I'm sorry, five to 10 minutes, that's too long, uh, minutes at today's session um, to answer all of those questions. And then we'll also be live tweeting, so join us in the conversation by using hashtag SEO for the holidays. And last thing, uh, this presentation will be going live tomorrow. So look out for that email with our downloadable link that you can watch uh, the presentation again or share it with your colleagues and friends. So now I'm going to pass it over to Sean as he gets started with changes in Google. Thank you very much, Kelly. And uh, thank you once again, everybody, for, uh, for joining us. Uh, what we wanted to start off today is just by kind of laying out the groundwork and going over some of the changes that have uh, happened specifically in Google, uh, because most of the time when we're building an SEO strategy, the best place to start is where your results are going to, uh, to be displayed. So we wanted to cover some of the things that we've noticed changing within Google and uh, how that affects your overall SEO strategy. So some of the notable things that have happened uh, over the past uh, about eight months or so. Uh, first and foremost was uh, an expansion in site links and organic listings. So you can see the example that we have on the screen here where we can see that within an organic listing we have links that make it easier to access internal pages within the website. So we're going to cover how to get those items to show there because it really helps with your click-through rate and interaction within your website. Plus there, uh, there have also been some revelations as well and, and changes as far as the star ratings and structured data and the way that that displays, uh, as well as the content in the SERP as well. So the content that's being displayed uh, has been changing. And then this one we really don't have much of uh, control over. However, it is worth noting, and it is a fun thing that Google has been doing, it's the color coding and spacing in the mobile SERP. So it really helps us try to see, you know, the way that Google is moving, especially with the, the, the major move towards organic, uh, I'm sorry, the major move towards uh, mobile. And, um, you know, we can really base a lot of our behaviors around that. So the first thing that we want to cover is um, the first thing that you can do to be ready for the, for the holidays from an SEO standpoint is to really focus and strategically use structured data. Uh, a big, uh, the, what gets a lot of fame in structured data is the stars. So I, I'm sure everybody's seen them. We have a couple screenshots throughout the course of today's presentation where we actually show, you know, in organic listings where the stars and ratings show up. Uh, however, Google has made some changes, and this is where the fluctuations come in that we were talking about a moment ago. Uh, 
for a product category, Google has taken away a lot of the stars that are appearing in product categories. If you're optimizing for a specific product, your star ratings can still show up, but it is on a very product specific basis. So some of the things that you can do now that are going to help you cover your uh, product categories include using schema.org or some other uh, structured data language. Uh, I, I like schema.org personally, but use these three items and you're going to see a major improvement uh, in your website's performance. Uh, mark up your navigation, a uh, very easy guide over at schema.org or uh, we're gonna give you our contact information. We could even help you with that. But um, mark up your navigation, any specific brands that you are selling, uh, and then also your breadcrumbs, so helping Google crawl through. Now, it is worth noting that the stars are still useful, so definitely still get your review information in there in an attempt to get those stars, uh, because when they appear, and if you have them implemented correctly within your, uh, within your individual products, um, get those stars implemented, the ratings implemented, and in the best case scenario, you can increase your click-through rate by upwards of 30%. So it's a pretty significant amount of traffic that you can increase without even increasing your rankings. So the reason that uh, structured data is so important is because it is that straight line of information for the uh, spiders and for Google. So uh, when you when we're talking about spider recognition of your content, that of course leads to better crawlability, so Google can get through your website easier. So if your navigation is marked up in a language that Google understands directly, they can get through your website easier and know exactly where they are going within your website. And when things are easier for Google, it's frankly better for us as retailers. That you know once Google knows, likes, and trusts our website more, we, you tend to get uh, better rankings and better treatment out of there. The next item that we want to review is um, really a focus on your content and trying to get that content in line with uh, a, a, a practice known as LSI. LSI is uh, short for latent semantic indexing. This plays into the concept of uh, semantic search semantic SEO. Um, we remember a couple years back, Google released the Hummingbird update, plays in directly with this. So content as a strategy used to really just be about getting your keyword density, getting keywords into your content, but it's a much bigger picture now. We really have to reflect much more beyond just getting a keyword into your content so many times to be optimized for it. So in this instance, uh, we're, we're talking about optimizing a page for the term red dress. So typically you wanna begin with um, getting that keyword density to about 1%. So um, real quickly, you, you have 100 words of content, mention red dress once. Keep that pattern going up and that's going to make that page very relevant for that term. Now, it's not that easy though, you know, having said, you know, about getting it to 1%, it is not that easy and you're not going to rank based on that element alone. What you want to make sure is happening is that you're painting a whole picture to Google because with Google's effort being to answer questions rather than just return queries, you really want to make sure that you are, your page is ready for anything. So when you're constructing your content and getting ready for the holidays, you have this page that's talking about a red dress, but you also have to th think about other things, like the fabric that that red dress is made out of. You have to talk about the shade of red. You know, you can talk about the, the fact that it's a scarlet dress or, or, or uh, 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 any other shade of red that might exist. Um, you can talk about the form and fit. So, you know, is, is this a slim dress? Is it a plus size dress? What, you know, what, what other elements go along with it? This plays directly into sizing. Is it a short skirt? Is it a longer skirt? Is it formal? Is it informal, casual, clubs, etc.? cetera? Uh, talk about different fashion terms. So mention, you know, is this a chic dress? Is this, um, you know, a, a dress that, 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 that has been seen on the runway? And then, of course, talk about different trends, uh, different things that are going on in your industry uh, right now 
that are going to be relevant to this search term, you definitely want to make sure that you include within your content. And the point of this is to make sure that you're always relevant uh, within what the with what the end user is searching for. So content really, you cannot set it and forget it, so to speak. Uh, you, it really has to be a living, breathing thing. And I'm starting to see a couple questions come in. Thank you very much for getting those in there. Um, please just keep them coming in and we're gonna definitely address them uh, all at the end of, uh, at the, end of the uh, presentation here. So the other side, um, the other element that we definitely want to uh, cover is the fact that page titles have gotten shorter within the SERP and uh, content in general has really uh, shortened within the SERP. So this is really derived from the increase in mobile use, which we're, we're gonna be focusing on momentarily here. If we remember this time last year, Google made a slight design change to the SERP and this reduced the character limit uh, in Google in the organic listings from 70 characters to 65 characters. So it, it, it shortened you know, what, what kind of uh, messaging you could put in front of your end user. So what we're seeing now is that with continued growth in mobile use, the websites that are performing the best have even shorter page titles. So we're seeing between 55 and 65 characters as being the limit for how many characters you want to get in there. Um, and we're also seeing a bit of a, uh, an overall performance increase when, uh, when the page title length is reduced, uh, and this applies to both desktop and mobile searches as well. So now, of course, we want to talk about the impact of Mobile Geddon. Uh, mobile Geddon was definitely a, uh, a game changer. Uh, when, when it comes to your uh, search marketing strategy, it essentially functioned as, you know, if you have a mobile website, you are going to, you, you get the go past, go collect $200 uh, sign. If you don't have a mobile website, you're not showing up on the mobile SERP. And it was expected that it was going to be this huge revelation and this huge thing to, that impacted so much of the web, the biggest algorithm update ever. But in reality, it didn't really um, rock that much. There were a lot of brands that still don't have mobile websites yet are still performing well in the organic SERP on mobile devices. Now, this slide is kind of tongue in cheek. It's, it, it's meant to, of course, be humorous just because it was amped up to be such a big algorithm update. And then it was kind of over under, I'm sorry, underwhelming with what the impact actually was. So we're gonna throw this little caveat in there that this is the reality so far. And what we mean by that is that shortly after the mobile Geddon uh, algorithm change came about, Google confirmed that mobile search traffic exceeded desktop search traffic. So that means more of their audience is on mobile devices than they were on desktop devices. So you have to think if Google's audience is using that medium, we have to make sure we are modifying our strategies accordingly. So how you can do this uh, on your own is to use uh, the search console or webmaster tools, uh, whichever you want to call it. That's a, it's the same tool now, it's just been rebranded as search console. Um, in your, uh, the left-hand sidebar there, you can uh, expand search traffic, click mobile usability, and then you're going to look for mobile errors. So what you want to, you're going to see a graph like this that highlights what kind of errors there are. Um, and what you want to see is what's on the screen here where we can see that currently there are no errors. If there were errors, uh, if there were things to address, this is where they would be listed. There's a number of standard items, uh, such as font is too small, elements are too close together, different things along those lines. Uh, once again, this is something we'd be happy to take a look at for you. But of course, uh, here's the steps that you can do it on your own. And then what you're also going to want to do is hop over to Google Analytics and take a look at uh, this set of metrics here. So we're really going to want to start to focus on the usability metrics 
uh, and we're going to get to why in a moment here, but the two metrics that I would start to focus on, just judging by uh, the trends that the, the moves that Google is making uh, within your mobile search traffic, uh, I do have this uh, filtered down to organic traffic specifically, but we want to look at the behavior metrics bounce rate uh, first. Uh, and what you'll notice here, the trend is that desktop is currently at about 40%, tablets at about 47%, so a little bit higher. But then we look at mobile, and it's at about 56 and a half percent. So that means the mobile user is really not interacting with the website as much as they should be uh, what we see on the desktop device. Now, of course, this is human behavior in a lot of regards. But we really want to see that people are reacting well to your mobile device. So in this instance, there's definitely some things that need to be done. And then we also want to look at average session duration. So it's, it's uh, in our research, it's looking like uh, the amount of time spent on a website impacts the amount of uh, or how well your website performs organically. And we can see again that on this mo for this website on a mobile device, uh, the time spent on the website overall through organic traffic is significantly lower. So these are uh, some of the things that you definitely want to make sure you take a look at. So the question that may be going through some of your minds, um, you know, Doug the questioner here that we have on the screen, he, um, he's wondering why are we talking about user metrics when Google doesn't really necessarily put those in the fold as far as, uh, as, uh, as far as ranking metrics go. It's very predictable that Google is going to start giving ranking presence uh, by performance metrics. So they're going to rank where you are based on how well the people are interacting with your website. Um, Google has confirmed that there are more updates coming to Mobile Geddon. Uh, it was it was just the beginning, uh, so it essentially acted as a switch, a yes or a no. But uh, we're going to start seeing uh, more um, changes taking place through mobile search uh, over the next couple of months here. So the next thing that we wanted to focus on was uh, a history of the timely algorithm updates. And again, that's kind of said uh, tongue-in-cheek. That, um, that these updates are taking place. Um, so what we have here is a quick table that, what we have here is a quick table that shows when these were released. And you can see that um, the last couple, uh, 3.0, 2.1, and then even number three, all took place in October, right at the beginning of Q4 as we're getting ready for the holiday shopping season. And this is a major influencer on why we're even holding uh, this webinar today. So knowing that Google is inclined to do this algorithm update in October, this is where uh, we wanted to start getting into the analysis piece here uh, because if, you, if, his, if history is something to reflect on, uh, as a means of predicting the future, we're a couple months out from one of these uh, happening. So, um, one thing that Google is making the move towards is live time updates. So, they, they want Penguin to essentially be a live time thing. So, if um, you know, links are built and different things are done uh, on your website, Google's going to know instantly. However, we are still at a point where there is a year between updates. So it's one of those things that we have to contend with, that it is no longer just a live time. It's, no, it's not live yet, but we are a year between the individual updates. So it's hard to think about how we recover uh, between, in, in between years when uh, Google makes these updates. However, it is possible. There are a couple steps that you need to take if you were impacted by Penguin last year. Uh, unlike a manual spam action, recovery is possible before the next update comes around. So with a manual spam action, of course, you have to file reconsideration with Google, et cetera, et cetera. Um, with a uh, Penguin 
impact, uh, for lack of a better word, you are able to counteract it by doing the right things. And of course, that means build great links, kind of. Um, you really don't want to focus on building links through directories and all of those different kinds of things. You want to focus on building great relationships. So being active online, building a great social community, all of those different things are going to play into your off-page optimization, and that's going to help your uh, SEO overall. So one thing that I charge everybody with today, because we are moving uh, quickly into the holiday season, take two months now. From today, take two months and start building those great relationships. Start reaching out to bloggers within your industries and telling them about the great things that you do. Start uh, doing great things in your community that you know can result in uh, links and different off-page optimization factors that, that, uh, that are going to enhance your website. And I say take two months and do that now because two months from now is of course going to be September. So if you have two months that you can build up a great backlink profile and really strengthen your website's optimization when October rolls around and Google releases the Penguin update, you're going to have some strength behind you that should uh, counteract any um, negative impact of the Penguin update. So what we want to go through real quick on how to perform your own analysis. Um, these are the five steps that you can take to go through and get your uh, website ready for the, uh, for the holiday season. And of course, this is the... Uh, the analysis that we are giving away, we, we can perform this for you. Uh, we're going to give away how, or we're going to tell you how you can get that at the end of the uh, webinar today. Um, but the, here's how you perform this if you want to take it on and do this on your own. Uh, first step is to analyze your page titles. So um, for, the, for the record, everything that is being shown in this analysis, they, these are not clients of ours. These are just uh, big brands that we wanted to, uh, to highlight here. Um, so the first thing that you can um, the first thing that you can take a look for is if your messaging is truncated within Google, that's going to be a sign that you need to go through and re-optimize your page titles to fit with the uh, the shorter messaging that Google is uh, pushing out there. The next is to examine your content. Uh, we have a tool through our resource LXR Marketplace where you can scan your website and you'll start to see some of the different things uh, that you can directly optimize. However, um, you can also just go to your website and do an internal gut check of how uh, your content is currently uh, looking. The next is a, a tool that is offered by Google. It is the Google uh, Mobile Website Analysis Tool. Uh, basically, what it allows you to do is to put in your URL. It, Google renders your mobile website and then um, displays what kind of errors they believe are happening. So this is public information that is applicable to the algorithm and this is uh, part of the reasoning why we believe this is going to play in to the um, into the mobile algorithm I'm sorry the mobile crawlers uh, moving forward. Next is to strategically implement structured data. Take a look at these two different listings here. The first one uh, includes structured data in the line that I have highlighted in red there. This is, um, it, it includes star ratings, it includes review items, pricing, uh, all of that different kind of information uh, where the one below it is just kind of a standard blue link. So get your, again, this is something that we can help you with, uh, but get uh, structured data implemented strategically that's going to help your performance, your click-through rate, and all of those other items as well. And the final step is to analyze and optimize your backlinks. Again, using our resource LXR Marketplace, you can take a look at your backlink profile. We can help you as well get a bigger picture. Um, so if, if you're interested, sign up for the uh, analysis, but uh, take a look at the backlinks, uh, the URL ratings, all of these different items, and um, you, you'll, you'll definitely get a, a good glimpse into what your backlink profile looks like so that you know if you need to start making some changes before the holidays.
Now, the piece of bonus content, of course, is uh, the replatforming concern. Uh, it was it was something that came up while we were uh, starting to plan this. We got a lot of questions. It seems like replatforming is a big thing that's going on right now. So we wanted to highlight that one misstep in replatforming could absolutely be catastrophic. So we see this um, this person here. They lost a lot of traffic, unfortunately, when they replatformed. Uh, working on getting them back up, um, but there there is a lot of uh, ground that needs to be recovered here. So what we wanted to share was that uh, th there's four things that you can uh, take a look at right off the bat. Again, one of the other giveaway items that uh, you can grab today is the uh, the 37 point uh, replatforming checklist. These are four things that you're going to want to uh, really make sure you focus on. Uh, your URLs, uh, consistency within those, your, your on-page data, so page titles, meta descriptions, H1s, et cetera, and all your back-end technical items. Uh, you want to make sure that there is uh, a straight line between the two different versions, um, your, web, your new website versus your old website. Um, and the thing to remember is that Google loves consistency. So what, here's what you want to happen. If you have uh, your old URL structure, you want to make sure that a 301 redirect exists that gets you to the new URL so that that way there are no broken links. Think about it. You have links uh, built on other websites to a specific page. Uh, if one of those links breaks, it's bad for the end user. So Google, of course, um, sees that as a, a detriment as well over time. All right. So that was it for the main portion of the content. So we're going to uh, keep moving along here and hand it back to Kelly. Awesome, Sean. Thanks so much for that presentation. So this brings me to gift number one. Take action now by getting your 37-point replatforming checklist. It's easy. All you have to do is email us at university at netelixir.com. Make the subject line replatforming checklist request. Don't forget to include your name and phone number. And now we'll jump into uh, the Q&A session. We have some time for just a few questions. So one that came in, um, when relaunching my site, which of the elements that you covered is the most important? Um, the first item, that the, the very first and foremost thing, um, that you're definitely going to want to make sure that you're covering is um, the URL item. So you definitely want to make sure that you are 301 redirecting your uh, URLs um, and make sure that uh, all of the old pages on your website go to a new location uh, in the new website. So that, that's going to be the main piece of consistency that you want to make sure happens. All right, and we have time for one more question. So what about quality backlinks? Do they still influ influence the SERP? Um, yeah, great question, and yes, absolutely. So we, we know Penguin rocked things up a bit. They, they definitely had, um, it, there, there was a lot, of, there, a lot of fear that was taking place as far as, you know, oh, you know, should we still build backlinks? Absolutely. Backlinks are still a major part of the algorithm, uh, despite anything that is uh, being said by Google. Uh, the studies are out there saying that you know uh, backlinks still very relevant. They just have to be of higher quality. So if you spend time and get one backlink that is good, it's much more important than grabbing 30 that really have no value. All right, so we'll close, um, almost finish up the presentation. So today's webinar was presented by NetElixir University, which was launched in 2012 with the vision of democratizing the digital marketing industry uh, through exceptional knowledge and expertise sharing. So we have a goal by the end of this year to share our best practices with uh, 10,000 businesses, and we are on track right now. I think we're about 8,500, so we're well on way to achieving our goal. And if you're interested in uh, learning about the latest trends in the digital marketplace, please join us on LinkedIn uh, at NetElixir University. 
And then here is gift number two, our final gift for our attendees. Uh, you can get a complimentary SEO holiday readiness analysis. <laughs> uh, email us again at university at netelixir.com, this time with the subject line SEO holiday analysis. Make sure to include your name and phone number. <laughs> So uh, that's it for us today. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, and please reach out to us if you have any additional questions on SEO and getting you ready for the holidays.